everybody. So there's our little strip, which for those people who are also in my Monday class, um, we've used this strip a lot this week already. Um, mm -hmm. So anybody who doesn't have this strip, I highly recommend it because it's such a useful reference strip to have. Um, so we've got this one. And um, these are all other strips that we made. The cadmium yellow to paint gray, the yellow ochre to paint gray, and the cadmium yellow to ultramarine. To anybody who missed that class who wants to do these strips, I highly recommend them. There is a recording on YouTube on how to do them. Um, but I think you'll find these really useful just for choosing um, the colors to incorporate. So you'll notice that the cadmium yellow to ultramarine green are much ultramarine and much brighter green so that's one of the greens we use down here um the uh yellow ochre to ultramarine it's a bit more kind of olivey greens and then the cadmium yellow to paint gray again a different green again so the nice thing about this painting is we've used a very limited palette but we have such a huge range of greens and i keep these in my in my box of paints so we'll, we'll make some more of these as we go. And I do like having the strips where I can put them right up against the painting for color match. And it's like having little recipe cards. If you sort of forget, oh, how did I make that really cool green? You can just look and you know how you made it. So um, when we do our next piece, uh, the color strips are gonna come in really handy. Okay, so let's get going. That's better. I've just turned down the light a little bit. So okay, I'm gonna put, open my palette. What's nice is I've been working with the same color palette over two different classes. So I have everything out and ready, which is really nice. Okay, um, so what we're gonna do today, just gonna show you um, one of the originals. Let's say I've got I've got two versions of this. The other one is hanging on my wall. It's very big. I can go and get it in a minute or I can screen share it for you. Um, we're gonna cut in into this lake. So we're gonna bring in the, the shore of the lake. We're gonna bring in the, the grasses. They're, they're gonna be last because we need the lake to dry before we put in the, the grasses. Um, we're gonna do the background birch trees first work forwards and we're going to do this one last the one in the foreground uh, so the lake on this one yeah feel free to take a picture it is in your notes there is a, a copy of it in your notes um so you can see that the lake kind of is almost comes down in steps around where the bushes are um there's whatever colors you've used in the sky you want to reflect in the lake the the painting the other painting was a speed painting i did in a paint night so that's why this one is a lot more detailed because this one i took a lot longer over um have a look at the birch trees so really um the only detail in the birch trees are these four the rest i've i've sort of simplified and also if you know how they're made you know how to make slight adjustments to really get the color you want mm -hmm. i find if you just squirt some out from the tube you don't really know what you need to add up or change to get the color that you really want. So it really helps when we're doing photorealism and you want to color match knowing how it's all made. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm using um, my large brush. Um, I'm not worrying too much about it. It's quite saturated with paint. It's all the way up the shaft, but I don't really mind. So I'm gonna be doing a bit of a step approach to start with so imagine where our bulrushes are growing out of so is that a, gr a dark green yeah so that's this green that we made uh -huh. with yellow ochre and ultramarine okay yeah all right okay so i'm just doing a little bit of a step I gotta get it darker. Yeah, it looks blue to me too, yeah. Looks like a blue. Kind of like a tealy 
Okay, okay, that helps. And then do we need much of this? Not really, this is the only part okay. we're doing, so. All right. Yeah, it does look tealy, that's good. So you're sort of doing the dot dot um, technique? Yeah, I'm just kind of dabbing, yeah. Dabbing. I know it's very dark, so it's a little bit hard to see on the camera. But we're going to really brighten this up in a minute underneath. So we're just establishing where the shoreline is. Oh, that's the shoreline, what you're doing yeah, right now? This is the shoreline, yeah. Okay, I've only got four inches in total below my horizon. Me too. Oh, okay. All right, so... Are you going right um, side to side, like the whole width? Yeah, but I'm doing a little bit of an angle and I'm kind of going up and down a bit. Okay. Because my, um, my, my reeds are going to come out right. I want, you know, you don't have like a solid straight shoreline. If you, if you have your horizon higher than mine, if you're on a um, more of a rectangular canvas, then for sure, you know, you can add more water. I'm just a little bit limited. Mm -hmm. Might take this a bit higher. Much better. I have to say, I, I do like painting with the three quarter inch brush. I do, I love it. Yeah. It's bigger. And bigger canvases too. Yeah, it makes a big difference. Yeah. But it takes longer to cover. So, you know, I, that's why I always start small. I was thinking I bought um, eight by 10 on an econo pack, but now I'm wishing it was nine by 12 because proportionately yeah. it's a little bit easier, but it does take more paint. But yeah, yeah. Um, I think the proportions end up better. Yeah. So I'm going to add some white into the mix now. Into which mix? The, the mix that we use to make this teal okay. on the horizon line. So just a little bit of white. I might have to make more. I think I ran out. Do we need much? No, oh, just, just like a little that. bit. Yeah, just a little bit down here. Maybe I have enough on my brush. Very little, yeah. Just use up what's on your brush. Okay. So the green below, is that the, is that like you're standing on the grass looking at this? Yeah, like this, is, is, this is gonna be the edge of the forest as it meets the water. Mm -hmm. So the green below that is gonna be what? This is water. No, the first inch of green on the bottom, what is that gonna Here? be? Here? No, below your, below, below your teal green. Here? Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm painting over. That was just our background. Okay, so that's gonna yeah. become the lighter white with the- That's teal. gonna, yeah. Okay. So this is gonna be more reflecting our sky color. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, excuse me, I, I sort of missed that. Um, so is this over, uh, this lighter shade is above what we just painted? So we've done the little edge of the water. Then we've added a bit of a white to it. Yes. So all of this is going to be reflecting what's above. So this is the water. And we're going to be putting in bits of green to reflect the bushes, bits of yellow to reflect these bushes, bits of blue sky you know, to reflect. So it's going to be a little oh, mixture okay. of everything because it's water, so it's reflecting everything. 
Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, actually, sorry, the lake shore doesn't, or uh, yeah, it doesn't go right to the bottom of the canvas. No. No. Okay. Uh, yeah. And when, what, if anybody has a second device, I find having the reference photo on a second device really. Yeah, that's yeah. definitely, that's why I sent the notes so you could either. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. That. I'm going to screen share. Hold on. Okay, I'm just going to screen share. Can you see the original? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can see the, the lake is reflecting everything that's happening above. Yeah, so your lighter lake goes to the bottom of your canvas. Yeah. I wish there was a way I could divide my screen when I screen share. So it's 50% screen share and 50% what I'm mm. showing you. <laughs> I'd rather have the bigger you. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what Ken says to me when I moan about putting on weight, but. <laughs> <laughs> No, I can't say Henry's ever said that to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Okay. So I'm just trying to stop the kitten from jumping on my palette. Okay, so mm -hmm. I'm gonna start putting in some of the blue sky mm -hmm. that's reflected. Oh, I see. In the water. Look at the cat. Oh my God. Oh my God. Can you see him? Yeah. Oh, so cute. So, so what are you using now? To walk over my palette. <laughs> so I'm putting in some of the sky blue. So whatever you used for the sky, huh? we're just putting in a little bit of it. Okay. So you want to sort of roughly look at the shapes that you have mm -hmm. above and it doesn't have to be perfect. But you wanna mimic a little bit of what's going on above. Mm -hmm. The color we just used uh, before you introduced that color, it mine looks quite green. That's good. Oh, okay. We're going to put right. a lot more on here anyway. All right. Because, okay. um, you know, there's going to be all the foliage and stuff reflected. There's going to be uh, um, reeds and there's going to be a lot going on here. So it's definitely not going to be a solid color. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, just put, treat the thing we've just done as a bit of a guide. All right. Yeah, I do like the three quarter inch brush. I find it's 
it's such a versatile brush. Mm. So I may put, once this is dry, I may put another layer on this so it looks, a, you know, more of a match for my sky because it's still picking up a little bit of the green underneath. But I'll see yeah. how it goes. mix in some of this yellow that I have up here. So it's yellow ochre and white. And I'm just going to bring a little bit reflected in the lake. So I'm just kind of doing a little bit of a zigzag with my brush. Just did you clean up. your brush? Um, I did just wipe it. I didn't bother All rinsing right. it. I may need to do two layers because again, we're covering quite a lot of green. So I don't want to go for overkill. I'm just putting in a little bit reflected color, maybe just, you know, and kind of make it different sizes and shapes. We are going to be reflecting the trees eventually as well. So looks like, is it about a three um, intense? Um, value or yeah I just tried looks to match pretty bright I, yeah I tried yeah. to match what I had up here okay. so just look at the colors you have up here uh-huh and we're just going to bring in just a few touches I mean it doesn't have to be an exact match because it's it's water too so water always dulls down the colors so um we're just kind of making it so it's not like a solid blue so I'm going to put in a little bit of yellow and white now because we had a little bit of yellow and white up there. What you just put on was it ochre? So this was ochre and white and I'm going to just okay. bring a little bit of yellow into it to reflect this more yellowy color I have up here. Just a few little dashes here and there. We're all going to be reflecting the trees as well. Now I know where that phrase comes from, curiosity killed the cat, because he's just so curious. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> this is where it's useful if you do use a wet palette and you just open it from, you know, your previous time and you've already got the colors already there on your palette saved from last time. It's one of the other reasons why I use a wet palette. So I'm going to bring in a tiny bit of ultramarine with that yellow. I'm going to put in some bright greens to reflect what's going on in the ground. Mm But don't worry about this too much because we can just keep adding to this as we paint in other areas of the painting. You know, we mix a nice color somewhere else. You think, oh, I might put some of that into the water. So don't worry about this too much. Okay. 
You are making this very difficult to paint, Digby. Just keep trying to catch my brush. <laughs> Uh, is that the, sorry? Excuse me. Is that the like the sky white yeah. or blue sky? Right. Just white, just white. It's white with a tiny bit of blue. I'm just trying to copy what's going on up here. Okay, so use the same blue. I use um the uh, azalea. Uh, what's that called? Azalea. The the more turquoisey blue. So right. I would use that. Yeah, yeah, just use whichever one you used and. Just want to reflect, a, you know, roughly what's going on above, but it doesn't have to be perfect. I would say don't spend too long on this because we can keep adding to it later. Um, when we start thinking about the trees, you might want to practice on a piece of paper first or on another canvas, uh, especially if you're not used to doing straight lines with a large brush. So I'm going to show you the, the other version, the, the, the fast one, which I did during a paint night. So you can see I kind of really simplified the water for this one. But I just wanted to show you what we're going to be doing with regards to the distant trees. They're very simplified, the distant trees. We're just going to be using um, a variety of greys for those distant trees. We're going to do all of those first, and then we're going to do our focal trees. So when you are ready, we will make a gray. So we're starting with a darker gray. So on the value scale, about a seven. On a scale of uh, zero to nine, we're looking at kind of a seven gray. So on the darker side to start with, uh, we're going to be using just white, either black or paint gray, and a little bit of some of the greens that are on your palette right now, just to green it up a little bit so it's not too stark gray. So I've got my white. Mix in a small amount of paint gray. The paint gray is very blue based. So either black or paint gray has quite a lot of blue in it. So we want to warm that off a little bit. So it's a warm gray. So for us that have black, it's white, it's black. Black, white, blue. and you can put in a little bit of whatever green you've got left on your palette. Okay. Black, white, all right. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make, cause I quite like this one I made even though it's too light, I'm going to actually leave that and make a separate little pot, make a darker one. So hopefully you've got a little bit of green left and just add the green to black and white just to take the harshness away. Julie, you, you're using two small palettes. Is that easier than one big one? I'm just using it so it fits under the camera. That's all. I normally use a huge one, but I find um, because I'm trying to show you what I'm color mixing, 
this was another class. So I'm just using up what I have left from another class. Um, and I'm just keep, it's just so it fits under the, the space here more than anything. If I'm painting by myself, I'll use a big one this size. So what we're mixing now is to, is to make what? We're making a dark gray. And this is gonna be for the trees in the background. Oh, dark, dark, dark. And so you may want to practice on a piece of paper first if you're not used to drawing thin lines. I find the larger the brush, the easier to do the lines thinly. And the technique is I make the color I want, then I really rinse my brush. Dry my brush on the paper towel. And then I use my fingers like a pair of hair straighteners and just kind of smooth out the damp bristles. It's really tempting when you've made the collar to just use it straight away, but um, I find it's better to, to actually get all the paint off your brush or use a different brush. Just have a mixing brush and a painting brush. So you kind of want to get a nice sharp edge. And then I only put a very small amount of paint on the end of my brush. And I'm gonna start with some of these background trees. You can see that the different types of grays. So I don't want them all to be the same gray. Some are darker, some are lighter. Now I actually find it easier to paint um, from top to bottom. So I'm actually gonna turn my canvas upside down just because I find this, this, this works for me. <laughs> Um, just for the first few, because I'm not going all the way to the top. So I'm going to put in some very distant uh, trees to start with. So they can be, because we're going to have quite a few, you know, you can start anywhere you like. Let's say if you need to practice on a piece of paper first. So these are going to be the smallest ones. I'm going to press down and as I get closer to the top, I'm going to reduce the pressure on the brush. And this is why I like using a thin brush. Practice though, it does take practice. You do need a, a damp brush that you've smoothed out and very little paint on the brush. I'll show you that again. So you press down, reduce the pressure so you're almost lifting off. Trees do not have to be straight. They can be at angles. They don't all grow straight. So let's just practice a few really skinny ones. I'm gonna make a couple into letter wise. And then I'm gonna turn <laughs> and voila, our first few trees. Trees are wider at the bottom. So that's why I, I tend to do the lines first and then when I'm back the right way, I'll thicken them up a little bit at the bottom. But practice, this is, there's no rush to do this. And if you want to practice on paper first, Go ahead. So you're still using your three quarter? Yep. 
Oh, I don't know. Really, I don't know why yeah. I really have many other brushes. I tend to use this for nearly everything. Yeah. If you're struggling with the lines, you can dab too. You can just walk the brush up. Oh. Another way to do it. This is not an expensive brush. This one, mm -hmm. this one I just got. Um, I don't know if it was Michael's or one of the dollar stores. This was not a mat an expensive brush as things get further away they get lighter but because we've got the the shadow overhead of the foliage the rules change a little bit um so i'm using about a number seven but it is a little bit um it, it turned out a little bit lighter but that's okay um as i get in towards the the middle ground of the trees it's going to be quite dark because that's where most of the shadows are but then when i do the birch trees at front they're going to be the brightest so just slightly different rules forests than mountains so i'm going to do these thicker Don't forget to make your black, your gray, a little bit greeny, just to take the edge off a bit. So I've just mixed a bit more green because I didn't have enough. How's everybody doing with the lines? Are you practicing or are you going straight for the canvas? I'm practicing on paper. I think I could have a whole class on trees. Just yeah. On, on lines. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm so struggling with trees. lines. Oh. Well, I plan on us spending a fair amount of time on these. So honestly, there's no rush. Um, you know, the little bits of reeds and stuff are not absolutely necessary. The main thing is the tree. So we literally have an hour to practice with these, um, you know, to to do these. So don't take your time. Don't rush. I'm trying the dab method now where you're dabbing all the way up instead of yeah you kind of walk the brush up yeah walk it the is brush up. it is also about kind of holding your breath <laughs> yeah I do I'm holding my breath yeah <laughs> even practicing and laying off the coffee <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that my okay can you see this one I've brought Whereas these, I've kind of tried to tuck them behind this bush here. A few okay. of these I'm going to take down to my horizon line. But I'm actually, I'm, I'm cutting it up a bit so it looks like it's tucked. This one is in front and it's kind of tucked behind. I'm going to do another one. Let's see, I'll do another one next to it. Don't worry about if it goes into the ground because we can put grass around it to, to kind of ground it anyway. So I'm going to put another one next to it about here, I think. So I'm going to take it down to my horizon line, but I'm going to put some grass in front of it to ground it. So as things get closer, it'll be a little bit wider, thicker. and It's amazing how there's already depth. Yes, yeah. But you see all that work we did last week pays off. I, I meant your skinny trees in your... Yes, yeah. 
And changing the colors slightly too makes a big difference. But yeah, we've already feel like we're, we're kind of building a forest. <laughs> It's funny, I feared trees for so many years and I've recently really got into them and started really enjoying them. And I did so many classes on how to do trees and it just wasn't sinking in. Mm. So in the end, I just practiced and practiced and practiced in my, on my own time and figured out, okay, if I'm going to be drawing a tree, like what does it look like? So I've spent a long time in forests kind of looking at trees and looking at... And I discovered, because I, I teach kids classes, if I can describe it in shapes or letters of the alphabet. So when I'm doing complicated trees, I always say we do lots of Ys, coming off Ys, coming off Ys. But birch trees are so simple. Um, when we get to the ones in the foreground, I'll show you uh, my little formula for birch trees. But um, really, most trees are just solid trunk and then if you think about the letter y i'm kind of splitting it and and if you imagine the trunk of the letter y is basically the width of the two splits together so if you were to close that up it would be the width of this does that make sense if you were to like close that so i always say you know it's like the width of the tree is the same it's just when it divides you split in the, the the width but always make one thicker than the other one and every now and again i can have a little so if you have say you decide to bring a branch out like this this and this you now need this part to be the summary of that and that does that make sense so I need to make this thicker. So then if this was split, it would be that and that together. That makes the width of the trunk. And then obviously it gets wider as it gets towards the bottom. Yeah, those are huge tips. And it's purely because I got so frustrated with trees myself and I just, the stubborn part of me didn't want to give up on trees. <laughs> yeah. But I love painting trees. I don't enjoy painting. I'm not very good at doing people, but I don't enjoy painting people. So I haven't really pushed myself to really uh -huh. learn any techniques. Because mm -hmm. people, it's so hard to get it right. And you can easily get it wrong and then they just look really ugly. And I think I'd rather spend uh -huh. my time on trees. Because nobody knows what the tree is supposed to look like. It's mm -hmm. nature is imperfect. So whereas if you're trying to paint a portrait of somebody, you've got to get it right. Mm. Winston, I I went <clears throat> visited Winston Churchill's uh, home two years ago when I was in the UK. Oh wow! And he was quite the artist. Really? He was amazing. Oh yeah, his paintings are amazing, and uh, he, ha you know how he has all these great quotes. And yeah. there was a quote: "I prefer painting tree." It, this isn't the exact wording. His was much more clever, but the idea was: "I prefer trick painting trees to people." I've yet to have a tree protest over the likeness. Oh, that's uh -huh. well. That's exactly right. Yeah, that's a really good quote. Because that's why I don't do people. <laughs> and if people always say to me, oh, can you do that? You know, because I've, I've, I've actually turned down a few commissions where, you know, they've given me a picture of a favorite holiday destination, but then they want the people in it. And I'm like, no, because if I get it wrong, they're not going to like it. And it's just too much pressure. <laughs> Will we even argue with the camera? I don't look like that camera. Exactly. Yeah. And I've, I've taken pictures and when I, of other people and I think, yeah, they don't look like that. <laughs> and pet portraits, I have a friend who does pet portraits who's really good at it, but I am not. 
because again they've got to look like the character of that pet are you putting some white on the side so i'm just using the slightly lighter gray that i used for these very distant trees and i'm putting mm -hmm. them on one side mm -hmm. um so i'm just going over just to and you might have to wait till it's dried a bit or hair dry it but i'm just adding a slightly lighter gray on the left hand side of those um, four trees that I've put in the middle ground. So um, there are two trees. I'm just going to quickly screen share for you. There are two trees in the middle. Can you see those two trees in the middle? So that's what we're going to be doing first. Okay. Um, so there's one that's straight. So I'm going to take it from about one finger space down from my horizon line. Don't really worry about what it goes over. So this is quite light. This is about a number two on the value scale of gray. But I'm not going too thick to start with. Because I'm going to build up the thickness with the shadows. I'm going to go slightly out on the left hand side, the bottom. So I'm going to leave a fairly ample space, or at least a finger space, in between this and the next one for now. My next one's going to be at slight angle. I will need to put a second layer on that. But I'm going to gradually add a bit of shadow. So now I'm going to add a bit more gray to the mix taking it down to about a four. I'm going to try and keep that light for later so I don't want to lose it completely. So I'm taking it down to about a four. And I'm going to go up the side and slightly overlap what I've just done so it blends. Yeah, I'm going to go right from the bottom, slightly overlap the edge so it blends. And then last but not least, I'm going to go a shade darker again. And again, I'm going to go right to the edge, slightly overlapping. There we go. So we are going to add detail, but we're going to let that dry before we add a second coat of white to the light side and before we add the detail. So it's important we give it a chance to dry. Uh, should we um, put it upside down again? If you find that easier, for sure. Thank you. If I wasn't demonstrating, I'd do the whole thing upside down, but I don't want to confuse you by getting your thoughts. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm easily confused. If I'm painting by myself, I'll do the whole thing upside down. The amount of times I'll do almost an entire painting upside down, um, or I'll do it on its side, and, and it must just look so bizarre. <laughs> but just really you have to work with the way that your body is you know 
could do lines more easily. So I'm going to repeat that on the uh, left of the painting. I'm going to do a little bit more of a of a windy tree. This is a uh, this tree was from what I remember when I was there. It was quite a bendy tree. The tree is the same width because it's so close. It's the same width. It doesn't get uh, really thinner as you go up. Uh, these birch trees don't know because they're actually really tall as well. Okay. We're going to make the bases a little bit wider. But no, they don't really get any thinner as they go up. The, these two anyway. I mean, I was... It's interesting painting something plainer because I was there and they just seem to shoot straight up. The one on the right gets slightly thinner. The one that's closer that we're going to do in a minute. But if you want to make yours thinner for aesthetics, then, you know, go for it. Okay, is everybody ready to try the the one on the uh, on the right? So I actually had two trees on the right in the original paint, and I only put one on the right in the the fast one that I did. But I'm just going to quickly share the original with you. So you can see there's one like right off the edge of the the paint, the canvas. Um, and then there's this one slightly further back. So I dropped the horizon line on this one to make it look closer and this one's wider. Well, let's have a go at that. So let's do the one that's closest first. I'm going to take this quite so it's going to come off the edge of the canvas.
How are we all doing? Are we winning? Julie, what color did you just add to that strip? Green? Um, yeah, I just added a tiny bit of yellow ochre into um, the gray because I felt like it was going a bit too blue. Mm -hmm. So just added a little bit of yellow ochre into it to green it up a bit. I just felt like mm -hmm. it was a bit of a cold blue. Mm -hmm. Okay. A cold gray. Yeah, a cold gray, sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's good. Makes a difference, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It warms it up, especially the ones in the front. I'm still painting on paper. No problem. But at least you know what, what you need to do. You can always, you know, do do the proper ones in your own time. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to hair dry this and then I'm going to show you how to add the detail. And we are going to ground these trees by putting them in some grass because we don't want them kind of just stubs like this. So Julie, <laughs> yeah. It, if, in case you're interested, I put two painting quotes by Churchill in the chat. Oh, lovely. Thank <laughs> you. I'll have a look. Painting is complete as a distant activity. Distinct activity. Painting is complete as a distinct activity and of nothing which without exhausting the body more entirely absorbs the mind. Yeah. I love that painting trees rather than people. <laughs> it's hilarious. I feel like I want to put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> Don't forget to reflect some of the color in your water from your trees.
Um, would everybody mind um, putting into the chat uh, which day for next term they would prefer, Monday or Wednesday? Before, before we finish today, just add it to the chat in your own time. Would it be at the same time? If that works, yeah, we'll do 10 till 12. So either Monday or Wednesday. Mm -hmm. There's no long weekends over between now and Christmas, is there? Oh, I don't know. I don't think so. No. So um, is, the, is the Monday dependent on your other class not minding that you have more people? Yeah, or I can, well, the other class was, um, I made it 12 till two, because I had a commitment um, mm -hmm. on Monday morning. I did a six week um, polyvagal theory course actually to help me with my mindfulness program. Um, mm -hmm. but, but that's finished now. So I can do 10 till 12, but some of them wanted 12 because they had other things on in the morning um, mm -hmm. and it also I just need to talk to so CFUW is an alumni city uh, uh, University of Waterloo group and I just have to make sure they're happy with merging classes mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah I'll go with the majority if not I can just do them if everybody likes Mondays I can do back to back if I can't merge them, I can just do back to back on a Monday morning. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I'm going to just show you um, time's pressing on. We got 15 minutes left. I just want to show you uh, the reeds, how to ground these trees and um, put the, the little sucklings on the branches. So um, I'm going to make a olivey grass green. So white with a little bit of ultramarine. See, that makes a bright green. Then I'm adding in some of my yellow ochre. And then I'm going to add in a little bit of my black or paint gray to bring it down a bit. So we're combining all four colors, yellow, yellow ochre, ultramarine. Do you want until you get like a moss green and just going to bring it up the base of my trees and then take it across so it's not just around the base. I'm just doing little flicks upwards. I'm going to do the same, these trees. Did you change brush thickness? Oh yeah, sorry. Um, this is a, a quarter inch flat I'm using. Okay. Mm -hmm. It just helps, you see how it's grounded and like these look like lampposts and then um, mm -hmm. it's kind of. Yeah. Ground wow. some of it, okay. and you don't you don't want to know how many paintings I've got of beautiful trees that look like lampposts at the bottom because I didn't really <laughs> figure this out for ages. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, and if you want to, you can vary that green a little bit. If you want to, you know, you can make it a little bit lighter at the front. Add a little bit of ochre. Can you repeat the mix of color that you uh, used? So it's this? all four colors. So. Um, we had yellow ochre, yellow, ultramarine blue, and a bit of black. Um, and it doesn't really matter what combination of green you use to keep changing up a little bit. So each tree could be slightly different. Mm -hmm. But I would say use a lighter green. So more ochre in the, the tree that's closer. Mm -hmm.
Julie, your comment about loving winter scenes. Yeah. I used to love winter scenes and had winter scenes paintings on my walls. Yeah. After, th after 38 years of harsh Ottawa winters, I <laughs> swore I'd never hang another winter scene on a wall again. No, I don't like them on my walls. I use them for cards. Um, I like creating winter scenes because it's nice to use for Christmas cards. That's basically what I use them for. Because um, I still I still like to send old fashioned Christmas cards. I'm a, um, but but I feel that um, I know there's an environmental issue now with, with Christmas cards. But whenever I send cards of my paintings especially to my relatives abroad I finally keep them um my godmother frames them <laughs> but um I just think they make unique cards when the cards of your painting and the thing is if you're you know attending a, a painting class it's kind of nice to share your creations and this way you get to keep the original but you get to you know give a bit of a unique and it doesn't have to be a Christmas card. You could use them for, you know, little thank you cards or just seasonal. I make a lot of cards out of my paintings and I, I do sell a lot. People use them for like little note cards or it's a little bit. So I've just put a little bit of that green in the water. So the birch tree detail. Oh no, the reeds. We gotta do the reeds. If you have a fan brush, you can use it. Um, I don't tend to use a, a fan brush very much. I'll be using a. A flat. So I'm going to use a few different color combinations here. This will be in the video. So if you don't get time to do it now, I can, can always kind of do it in your own time. So I'm going to start with a light green. So yellow ochre and a tiny bit of ultramarine. So on our little, it'll be about here, about a number three or four on our ultramarine yellow ochre combo. I'm going to start about, let's see about here. Okay. And for those people in my Monday class who did the ocean scene and we did some grass in the sand, same kind of thing. If you want to cheat and use a Sharpie, you can do. <laughs> I'm doing a few sort of little clusters and I'm going to build up the color in a minute. I just want to establish where they're going to go first. So they sort of sit in the water. in there so at the moment i'm just doing yellow ochre and a bit of ultramarine while i establish where they're all gonna go these ones are closer so i'm going to do them a little bit taller And then when I've got about five clusters, I'll introduce a few other colors. So I'm going to add some 
pale yellow to this mix now. So it'll still be a little bit on the greeny side, but I'm adding quite a lot of white and yellow. And I'm just going to put a few little bits of grass in between. On my water's edge. So I want to put a few um, docks in here that really help them stand out. So I'm actually going to use almost pure black or paint gray, tiny bit of yellow ochre in it. And I'm just going to concentrate around the base of these little clusters. Julie, I'm signing off. Thank you for the class. No problem. I'll, record it. I'll send you the recording. Okay. Have a good afternoon, everybody. You, you too. Bye. Okay, so I'm just cutting in around these little clusters to ground them a bit. Is everybody still with me? Yeah. Real tired. <laughs> it is it is tiring painting. It's just a different type of tired. It's concentration. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just putting in a little bit of dark to ground these. And then I will, because um, we lost a little bit of time last week with the mm -hmm. internet down, um, I'm happy to stay sort of an extra 10 minutes so, um, for anybody who needs it. And I will keep recording. But if anybody has had enough and needs to go, totally understand. <laughs> but did want to show you these little um, how to get the birch feel. Uh, I'm happy to stay. Thank you. Okay, great. <laughs> so I'm going to do these little kind of little notches. Uh, what colors are you using for that? So I'm I'm actually using the same color that I used to darken here. So um, paint gray with a tiny bit of yellow ochre. I'm way behind. <laughs> no worries. So I'm sort of listening and then I'll, I'll touch everything up afterwards. I'm just going to share the original with you for a minute.
oh, I just realized I put the shadow on the wrong side. I had it upside down. Oh. So I'll have to redo that. <laughs> anyway, I can do that later. So I wanted to share with you a few pictures of real birch trees so you could compare. So have a look at where the notches are on mine. And then I'm gonna share. So, so um, you know, they're quite random. They tend to be like a little, little knot and then a few lines coming out. See the kind of little curves, little knots. And then they have these little, what did we call those again, Anita? Suckers. 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 Yes. Suckers, these little kind of things coming out. So use whichever size brush works for you. I might switch to a round for this. So paint gray with a little bit of a, and I'm kind of allowing my brush to sort of bounce around the, the tree. every now and again I'll bring out one of these little suckers oh, happy accident my arm slipped <laughs> And I'm only doing this with the focal trees. So these two in the middle and these two. I'm not going to do this with all of them. <laughs> <laughs> 